Hello, my peeps. Welcome to This and That Thursday. I am Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. What day is today? The 5th of May. I feel like that's part of something, the 5th of May. Um, it's not May the 4th, I know that. May the 6th is a big day, friend's birthday. Um, today, I guess, is just the, the day in between those two. I'm sorry, I keep moving things around. Uh, and trying to get my comments up. One of these times I'm going to get so smooth at this that you won't even notice the seven things I'm doing in the background <laughs> while I try to make it work. But for now, you're definitely noticing. Most of the time, because it doesn't really work the way it's supposed to. I can see on the time delay, I just saw my arm go across. I have little scratches all over the place. Um, yep. Razor blades are... Still, uh, still full force there in the in Rascal. Come on, there we go. Sometimes I think I should, it, you're not supposed to have like dead dead air, but sometimes I feel like I should just stop talking altogether, have some dead air, and just focus on what I'm doing, thinking maybe it will work faster. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Okay, we seem to be all good. So we're going to make chocolate towers. Um, it's funny, you know, I'm not a fan of the heat. I would much rather have winter than summer. Um, and and uh, I said something on the weekend at the farmer's market because it was starting to get really cold and it was going to rain. And somebody was making the comment on Alberta weather. And I said, you know, gale force winds. We're going to expect a little bit of rain. It'll probably snow a bit and then it'll be plus 30 by the end of the day. Um, but I do remember being on a fire once and wearing a pair of pajamas that had snowflakes on them in May. And the next morning it snowed. And, you know, then everybody just thought I was all powerful. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Let's see if I can do it again. Let's do the let it snow theme. And um, let's see if we can get snow by morning. <laughs> Hello, Donna. So, yes, actually, there is a very good reason why this is the one I have. Uh, because I did this in a, at a November workshop with a bunch of demonstrators. And this, this works in, to your favor as well. I did a PDF for it. And it just so happens that I kept the, the PDF and the, and the project that went with it together. Um, so you get to see Christmas stuff. I actually have a whole bunch of them I'm going to show you afterwards just to give you decorating ideas. I say a whole bunch. I have six of them. Um, but the, the, the benefit to you of the PDF is um, you will get all of the instructions, all of the pictures, everything in one nice little document that I think I have figured out how to link in my blog. So on Saturday in the blog, instead of having to like cut and paste a bunch of stuff or save things, there will just be a PDF that you can open up and save. Because um, these are fun and I can see making them more than once. So the basic concept, no matter how you decorate them, is there's a lid. And when you pop the lid off, you reveal four little boxes. Maybe I should keep this on screen. Oh, boom, boom. These ones are empty. Obviously, that's empty. <laughs> Let's try this one. So here's another one. Pop that lid off. This one has a purpose. I'll show you again later. But ta -da! it's chocolates. So in this case, these are the lint balls, as I call them. I don't think you finished yours. Donna, you got to get on that, man. That was that was 2019. I remember because I keep finding stuff from 2019, November of 2019. <clears throat> those are the lint balls. That's what I'm going to put in these ones. I don't. I really got to come up with a better name for those. Uh, a Ferrero Rocher will fit, unless you're Donna and you're allergic to them, then you don't want to fit them in there. So they will fit. They're a bit more snug than the other ones, uh, but you can get them in and out fairly easily. You could also put, oh, let's see what other things I have on my desk because I never put anything away. Um, I have these little chocolate hearts. Yep, there's, see, there's two of them in there. You could probably put three of them in, which means in total, you could have a dozen hearts. So that's like giving a dozen rows, and so only you give a dozen hearts. Uh, you could fit some, some of those Tic Tacs in here. You could fit like Werther's or Mints or... These are some of the best little candies. I'm not a huge strawberry fan. I mean, I like them, but I don't go to my way to get them or anything. But these little Campino 
There's some kind of strawberry yogurt hard candy. Oh my God, they're so good. Yeah, so you could put little candies in. You really, if you wanted to, you could put something different in each of the four boxes. There's no law that says you have to make them all the same. So, but anyways, this is it. And it and it and it's not as complex as it looks. You saw it as a few weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not, it's just a, maybe a little fussy, but it's not super hard. So I've prepped some pieces so that you don't have to watch me make every single piece of that. <laughs> I'll make it go by faster. And then I will show you some decorating ideas. In the meantime, while I figure out what I did with my trimmer, not buried. Um, I did my newsletter yesterday. Yes, yesterday was Wednesday. And there's just so much stuff going on. I, I have some classes announced, which may be in person or maybe virtual. I'm waiting for feedback. So far, I've got two votes for the first one for in person. Uh, there's a killer starter kit deal on right now if you want to get the starter kits. Um, there is some sales on some paper pumpkins. They brought back the, um, the all together suite because of blends are in stock now. There's so many things in there. So I'm not going to run through all of those tonight, but just know that there is a lot of stuff going on right now. And if you, um, I'm going to put a link to my newsletter when I post a video for this, I'll just pop it down there at the bottom. So you can, uh, you can after the fact get it and uh, read up on all of that good stuff. So I just realized that when I did this earlier, there we go. Um, I prepped some of the pieces, like I said, so you wouldn't have to watch it, but I didn't prep this piece, obviously, because it's still just there. And all of a sudden I figured out what I was doing. Okay. Um, I shouldn't have picked black cardstock. I did, and I had a reason for it at the time, and it's too late to go back now, but it's the one of the worst things to show on camera. So here, let's go back to this one. So this is basically what we're doing. I'm starting with a piece of cardstock um, that is five and a quarter by seven and a half. And on the seven and a half side, I'm basically gonna score it inch and a quarter as I go along. So you can see the four score marks, right? That's gonna give our basic fold that we need. Um, on the instructions, it says to go at six. So I'm going backwards because I like it when I, I'm starting at six and going this way. Um, I like it when I don't have to put the art mode on my thing. Oh, you know what? These are not um, these are not one and a quarter. These are one and a half. Sorry. Um, so I'm going like six, four and a half, three, one and a half. I just kind of started backwards in case you were trying to follow along. So now I have there. That's the base. <laughs> that's all the scoring. Um, oh, I am wondering. I'm going to do them one one piece at a time because maybe it'll be easier to follow along that way. So in the case of this box, we want to make sure that all our creases are nice. Some of my dates were not updated. My dates were not updated on what, Donna? Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, the time delay is, is too much. I had, a, I had a very busy afternoon. I had a last minute request for a whole bunch of stuff. And I luckily had some stuff left over from the farmer's market, um, but not all. So I was just like working like a demon this afternoon. And now I'm super tired. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, with, the, with that and the time delay, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> totally on me. Uh, okay, so here's our here's the base. Now, it is totally up to you how you decorate this. Before you start attaching anything, you you have to have made up your decision or your mind how you're going to do it. Um, I'm gonna here. We'll do this as we go. Maybe I was gonna wait till the end, but some of these things that I have like points to tell you. So in this case. I put on the back of this one of these panels, I put the sentiment. Um, I just chose to. I was trying to find different ways to decorate things. So this says life is better with a friend like you. So if this was sitting open, you would see the big flower on the in the front, but you'd also see this. Oops, right. Um, it obviously isn't going to work on black unless I use white ink or white embossing. But instead of putting DSP on the inside, you do have the option to stamp on the inside. I did not put anything on these boxes. I could, I could have stamped them before I folded them up because then on the sides and everything. So that's an option though, depending what color cardstock you're using, you could stamp on it. Uh, you could put the same DSP on the inside as you do on the outside. If you, what did I just do with that? Oh, there it is. Um, 
if you have DSP that is sort of a, um, it's a, it's a pattern that continues. Like if you wanted to use the in her, the horizon DSP, or you'll notice this one, the DSP is like continuous, like the flowers go together. So this piece of this flower, if you want to keep it this way, then when you're cutting your pieces, keep track of the order so that when you lay it out, you're, you're keeping it in the same order. Um, if it's something like this, I did actually keep it in the same order, but if you don't, it's probably not as noticeable. Um, and then which was the other one that I did? I think it was this one. Um, I don't, I didn't for the most part, I don't have, I don't have um, sentiments on most of these because I had it set up that I had extra sentiments at the market. So if somebody wanted one that said happy mother's day, I could make it say happy mother's day. If I wanted to say happy birthday or thank you, I could. So it was gonna be a sort of whatever was needed. Um, but look at the right box eventually, there we go. Um, in this case, so this is the outside paper. I use the same one on the inside and I even put it on the in front of these boxes. I went to town, but I kept one of these panels just as white cardstock, and then I just put a couple little strips of DSP just to kind of finish it up a little bit. So whichever way you decide to decorate it, you have five strips on the inside, five strips on the outside. They're all an inch and a quarter wide, and they're all five and a quarter long of what was happening this week. I think it was yesterday. Did you? Oh, <laughs> ah, we're in the same boat, aren't we, Donna? <laughs> okay, so in this case, <clears throat> I have um one dsp for the outside and one dsp for the inside and mine i i just i wanted to put bright flowers on so i was going with like a black and white base that's how the whole thing started and i started cutting all the pieces and then went oh black doesn't show up on camera um so but nonetheless that's what i'm doing i said i was gonna i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna adhere some of these strips and then i realized well i can't if i don't if i don't show the scoring um and i couldn't figure out where how much to do ahead of time and how much to to wait so now you get to watch me put strips on. Um, I will tell you though, that you'll notice I did put, <clears throat> uh, um, that's, but there's a word for it, adhesive on all four sides. Again, and I know I've broken record here, but this is an interactive treat holder. Like it doesn't just sit and look cute. Um, you will open it and close it and open it and close it, <laughs> especially if you have self-control and you, you know, only eat one chocolate a day or something out of it, then you're going to keep opening it each time you get another chocolate out. So you want to make sure that your decorations are on security. Just so that you're not, as it gets manhandled, <laughs> it's the pieces aren't coming off. It's not the end of the world if they come off, but you know, it takes away a little bit from the gift if it falls apart before the person's done using it. So we're just going to put these on. Uh, for the purpose of today, I may not put the ones on the center just so you don't have to sit there and watch me. I will. I won't put all of them on. I'll give you enough of an idea. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, it's probably enough of an idea for the outside. Um, or is it fun to watch me glue on strips of DSP? <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of my flyers. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's just pretend like I finished that last one and like we finished these inside ones. I'll show you which ones I need to do. I just need to do two of them for now. Yes. And then we'll move on to the next step and then I'll show you. I will eventually finish it, but um, the ones on the inside, I'm not putting as much adhesive on because it's not the inside that gets held onto as you open and close it. It's the, uh, it's the outside. And these ones are actually going to have uh, something over top of them. So that will also help hold it on. There we go. Okay, so let's pretend that's all finished. So there's our base ready to go for the most part. <laughs> now we need a lid. So you'll get really good at making boxes. And in case you're worried, uh, I've already made three of them. So you don't have to watch me make all four of those. Um, you'll get really good at figuring out the basic box technique. It's like dancing, get the box step down, you can do anything. Um, there's so many treats you can make. I forgot the measurement on this one. Let me, let me turn my page. Um, there's, there's so many um, things you can make with different boxes. The ones I was showing you on Tuesday, I mean, that's some basic box stuff there too. So 
So I like to do this and keep it simple for myself. So this piece of cardstock is three and one sixteenth by three and one sixteenth. So I made it one sixteenth bigger because I want it to be snug. I don't want it to fall off, but I need it to fit over top of this. Now this box is one inch by one inch by one inch. So by the time I'm finished, that's what this is going to be. I screwed it up again. I keep doing something wrong on this measurement. You know, I did this the last time too. I think I have the wrong piece. I do. Um, I think I have the wrong measurement on the PDF, which I'm going to fix before I send it to you five people. Because that's not going to work. Anyways, you want one sixteenth bigger is what you're going for. Because um, if I notice if it's one eighth, honestly, it's too big and it'll fall off all the time and then it will just annoy you. So in order to make this math easier, which even I seem to be rather challenged by it, if you make your piece of paper one sixteenth bigger, and then just <clears throat> in this case, I scored in three quarters of an inch in from each corner, then you don't have to try to say, like, because otherwise it would be um, I, three quarters off, so I'm drawing a blank, what's one less than three quarters, six, eight, seven, seven, eight, or seven sixteenths. Um, which gets harder to measure, right? You want the easy measurements. So make your paper a little bigger and then just keep the outside dimensions all the same. And then this is just a basic box. So we're gonna score the edges. We are going to trim. I just, I just trimmed the wrong one because now I'm rushing. That's okay, we're gonna make that the back, back of the box. When, when I saw this originally done, um, it's the tabs you want to take the little wedge off of. And the reason you're doing that is so that if your score lines are not perfectly straight or your fold is not perfectly straight when you line it up, because there's a little bit of leeway in this like millimeter wide um, score line, then you, you get the edges not even. So this way it gives you a little bit of play. And when you fold it up, you'll have a nice like smooth edge all the way around. If not, it's just too bulky and all you have to do is have one corner off and then it sets the whole thing off. So again, we are <clears throat> going to burnish all our lines. But yours isn't finished because I had the wrong measurement. For some reason, I think, I think we figured that out while we were doing it and we corrected it. And I think I just forgot to update it on the PDF. Um, and the the thing is, I took this, I should, I should mention that. There was somebody named Sam Clayton is the original. Um, and I think it was wrong on hers and I copied hers. And then when I went to make it went, well, that's not right. And fixed it on my like prototype, but didn't fix it on the paper. Cause I was basically just cutting and pasting a bunch of instructions from hers and changing them. Hers was uh, either that or hers might've been metric. I think hers had a lot less pictures in it and I was filling mine with pictures. So I was just cutting and pasting from, I, I don't actually think hers was a piece of paper. I think hers was just a website. But yes, a uh, typical cut and paste error where <laughs> you, just, you just keep cutting and pasting the same error. Okay, so um, one of the things you can do on this, and I probably should do it before I take all those tapes off, um, Okay, so I, I think it was the original one is where I saw this. The, yeah, see, because I got the right size PSP. Um, the, uh, the original box had DSP on all of these tabs going around. Now you're welcome to do that. I was not, I was not thrilled at the prospect of playing with all those, uh, my mother would say farty little pieces. Um, so I didn't want to do that. So you'll notice on mine, I tie a bow around the top because <laughs> then I don't have to decorate this part. You could stamp it, you could put DSP on it. I'm leaving mine blank tying a bow around it. But you can't put a little piece of DSP on the top. And the reason I'm putting that DSP on the top is because for me, it's a little sneak peek to the DSP that's on the inside. You could just use the same one on the outside and it's just a quarter inch square piece that you're popping on top. So we're gonna take these um, and I'd say the same thing every time. I love tear and tape. You, you, could, uh, you could do this with um, white glue, 
white glue, a little bit more play in it. Although I find even with me, when I'm using white glue, I find that it, it dries pretty quick. So, and I just, I always end up wearing it. I wash my hands 10 times during the project. Maybe that's why it's because I keep having to stop to wash my hands because I get glue everywhere and then it dries while I'm doing it and then it takes longer. Hola, Tamara. She's going to speak Spanish because she's, she's just about in Mexico right now. So in the heat, in the temperatures. Okay, so I'm folding these in. See, and this is this is what I meant when I said that. So you can line this up, and because because we've we've wedged them, there's it. It's not as hard to line up. And so now all of my corners, I can make that focus. All of my corners are nice and clean, which I like. Okay, so now we have our box, and we have our lid. And our lid is big enough to go on. Uh, and, and here's the thing too, it's a little snug when you first put it on, but as you take it on and off, it loosens up like those other ones loosen up a bit. And if all else fails, you just give it a little, a little pinch. So we have our lid, we have our base. Last, last time with the score. This time I know where I put it. <clears throat> so Tamara ha is uh, joining us, which means she got out of the escape room. Are you back at the hotel now, Tamara, chilling on your, your easy day? Uh, you know what I just figured out? Why that paper was wrong. <laughs> I did fix the measurement on there. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm scoring it a quarter inch <clears throat> in. And um, I'm scoring a quarter inch and I'm almost at the middle, which means there is no way this is going to work. So basically what I did was I fixed the dimension. I had the totally right thing. I grabbed the wrong square of paper off of my desk when I went to make this. So stand by one. <laughs> well, I find black paper that has everything piled on top of it without trying to cause an entire earthquake. And I recut the piece because I grabbed the wrong piece. Popcorn and gummies for dinner. That is the supper of champions. Supper of champions. <laughs> Good gummies too, I hope. Gummies are awesome. Okay, um, so this piece was supposed to be three and three quarters by three and three quarters. The other piece was three and a sixteenth. So I do believe I have fixed the problem in the, like I said, in the PDF. It's, the problem is 100% me grabbing the wrong piece of cardstock. Okay, let's try this again. So now if I was to go around, and this is the same thing, right? I'm making these into little boxes. So I'm cutting it three and three quarters and I'm just going around all four edges <clears throat> and then scoring it at one and a quarter. Yes, this looks, this looks much more like what it was supposed to be. <laughs> okay, note to self, Jenny's dead to you. <laughs> um, you know, you're on holidays, you, you got to enjoy. And I, I always, I always use the, the, uh, the logic that what if I never bake it back here again? What if I'm somewhere that has like this, they're famous for a certain dish and I don't eat any. And then I never make it back again. And I never get the chance to try that. Is it worth it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's worth it to just eat it while you're there and worry about it when you get home. Okay, so I am doing the same thing here. <clears throat> I'm, we're making these into little boxes. And in this case, I'm wedging all but one. So the, the pretty piece that you're gonna see on the front and on the sides, I am keeping square. That's the one I'm keeping square. And the other ones, I am making little wedges out of, so they fold nice. Um, I really, like I said, I really should have, just for my own eyesight, I should have put something other than black. It's really hard to see score lines on black, although eventually you do. Um, I also find, and I guess that's personal preference, because you could, you could fold first. Fifteen thousand steps today. Oh yeah, definitely okay with gummies. Um, you can fold them first on the score lines, and it's easier to see the score lines, and then you can trim as well. Um, I find that the if you're wedging, that's perfect. But on the piece that you want to go 100% straight, I find it easier to cut it straight if I haven't folded it. Now that's probably just me because, you know, I got my quirks. I'll be the first to admit it. I got quirks. Okay, so 
as you see, I have, so I've cut in these two are the ones you're going to see. That's the pretty edges. And I've just wedged the other flaps. And now I am going to, I have this down to a science now after making a few of them. I have it like this, so that when I turn the box to put the other ones on, they all go in the same direction. And again, um, I hope that's a little bit too long for that one that I wedged. Um, I am a big fan of the tear and tape. I remember the horrors. I still used it. I still liked it. But what was the other stuff called? Sticky tape? The one that had the orange plastic outside to it. And it was, you had to cut it with scissors. You couldn't, you couldn't just tear it with your hands. That's the best part of this thing is you can just tear it as you go. Um, but that orange sticky covering that was on it that you had to peel off was so staticky, like so staticky that, uh, oh my God, it used to drive me nuts. You're flicking and flicking and flicking, trying to get that stuff because you'd peel it off the thing and then you couldn't you couldn't get like let go of it. You try to throw it in the garbage, it would pounce back out onto the floor. You pick it up off the floor. So I did find out, I don't know who it was. This is, this is the beauty of being a demo. The red, yeah. The demos always figure stuff out, right? Motherhood, no. The necessity is the mother of invention. Demos always figure stuff out. And one of them figured out if you took your adhesive and just make a line on your piece of paper, or you could do it on, like, I could do it like this on the silicone mat too. And then as you were getting rid of pieces, you stick them like you, so you pull it off and you stick it down. Oh, sticky strip, that's right. Um, oh, I got rid of mine first chance I could. But yeah, you could have this strip here and then so you could stick the, the backing into it. And then when you were done, you just sort of threw that piece of paper out. Okay, so here's my other little um, advice to you. So this is gonna be the front of our piece. So we wanna fold these in. Now, I, I like to fold the back in first, then the sides, and then the front. And I have adhesive on here just so they're doing this. Now, if you do it the other way, it's not the end of the world. This makes it cleaner. And by putting the, the side flaps in the middle, like, oh yeah, black's not good sandwich between the front and the back piece, then they're not flapping in here because we're putting this candy in, the, in these ones, which is fairly snug. And we don't want, I don't want to be ripping on it and pulling on it. So I just, I put the side flaps in between the front and the back. Now, because I have adhes adhesive on it and I'm squaring up my corners, maybe I could hold that closer, squaring up my corners. They just get kind of sandwiched in between. And now you'll see, if I can make this focus, I have figured out that it's, it's trying to pick up the background. So if you hide the background, so now you can see these are the two lines, right? Those are the two back pieces. So if those go in the back, then this goes in the front and the side, and then you don't see any seams, you just see folds. So it makes it pretty, what I do with my tape. So now we folded up the box and we are going to put uh, two pieces of tear and tape or whatever you want. Tear and tape works uh, on the back. And this is how we're going to fasten them down. Now, I did I did think to stop and do this as we were going, but I thought I'll show you that you could, even if you did, even if you decide afterwards that you want to jish it up a little bit, um, you can still put on the DSP or whatever you want after you folded it up. And I'm just putting little one inch squares in the middle here because otherwise it is. These are so stark against what's going to be my cool stripes. I like those pink stripes. So I've got I've got bright flowers on the inside in the DSP and the stripes, and then I've got flowers on the outside. Um, that made me think of something. Yeah, if you wanted to put, you would need three for every box, right? So you would need twelve of these little squares if you wanted to really decorate. Um, I'm thinking that might get to be a lot, personally, and. Uh, if you had a like a name that was four letters, or I was trying to figure out how you could write I heart mum, right? Um, but there's only four boxes. So I was like, I heart, mm, yeah. Um, you could write love, right? So if you wanted to, you could have it like spell a message when you opened it. Okay, so here's the trick for the next part. So we've got magic of TV, four boxes made. This way, so you can actually see them. We have four boxes made now. Okay, so I just did the same thing I did for this one four times. Now I'll show you how to put it together. So this is all written in the PDF, but sometimes I think if you've seen it go together once, then you read the PDF, then the PDF makes a lot more sense. 
I cannot claim to be, you know, a phenomenal PDF writer. I try, but you know, let's let's face it. It makes sense in my head. So when I'm explaining it, I think it makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm trying to figure out how to show this the easiest way. So I've taken my backing off my tear and tape. So we're gonna put the first box right on top of the DSP. Um, I think in the original instructions, they were being conservative of DSP. Lord knows I got DSP. So I'm not worried about that little piece. Um, because I think the original one I saw, or I saw somebody make it afterwards, where they put like, so this one was cut so that it wasn't, there wasn't DSP behind the box. And then the next one had a little piece and a different piece. And then this one had different, life's too short people. So I've put it, I've lined it up with the DSP on the top. Then I'm gonna take another one of my boxes. And I'm going to, and we're doing this because if, if you, if you get it off a little bit and your boxes hit each other, then it never closes. So then I'm going to take this box, make sure the up the opening is up, and I'm going to I'm going to put it on this strip. Now those are my two, like that's the that's the inner and outer edge of what I'm allowed to do here. So now. I have to figure out where these are going to go on the inside, knowing that you want to make sure that they don't hit each other. Right? So that's all you're going to do, but line up the top and the bottom one first. And then we're pretending that I finished the inside, but I, like I said, I'm saving you some time here. Like this, right? So we're gonna we're gonna glue these two down. We're gonna have all our strips on the inside. Um, I don't actually know. I might put it. I might put this strip here. I might just put a. If I can find. There we go. Bet you this is one and a quarter or two. Where's this one? One and a quarter. That'll work for me. Yeah. We'll show you so that you can you can get the gist. This is me cheating on my, I love this little cutting thing and it doesn't go past four, but that doesn't bother me. <laughs> I can make that work. So, so now we've got this one. So now you have the, the four that you're gonna um, put your candies in and one that you can write, you're the best ever, thank you so much on or some such. There we go. Okay, so we could have a strip on the inside. Now you could put a little decor there. However, you end up doing it. Okay, we're gonna pretend those are all done. So it's good to pretend that things are done, but the stuff that you don't glue, it just eventually falls out. So my plan with this, I never actually thought of what uh, the ribbon I was gonna use. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna come up with a ribbon at some point to put around here, but I had these nice big day glow um, shimmer paper that I, that, uh, that I was lucky enough to be gifted with that were left over. I was working on them for a project and they were still left over. Here's what I was trying to decide. I was trying to decide, I'm gonna write happy birthday on the, the front. I absolutely love this happy birthday. This happy birthday, perennial birthdays, I think is the name of the stamp set. And I bought the stamp set because of this one stamp. It went with a kit, but I, I don't always buy the stamp set that goes with the kit. Um, I think that'll still work. Um, but I, wa I, I wanted this so badly. So I bought it, I used it for the kit. I don't think I've used any of the other stamps in there other than when people were using them to put them together, but I will never part with this stamp set or I'll sell all of the stamp set and just keep that one stamp out. But I absolutely love this huge block. Happy birthday. So that's what we're using today. So in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have put white paper behind me, but I'm going to. I think when I put the, uh, the other flowers on, I was trying to debate. Sorry, I lost my own train of thought there. 
I was trying to debate with these with these flowers if I should have one on the back of the box or not. <laughs> and Donna, you'll be happy to know that it was you. I was channeling you in my head when I thought, well, basically these flowers are the embellishments. And so, yes, I need three of them. So I cannot just put one on either side. Um, I guess I could put one on the top. But no, I decided that nope, I had to have three of them <laughs> because that's just the rule. You know, this wonky thing of, of glue dots that I got. I also, I also think it's missing a lot of glue dots because I, I rip the paper off as I go. And uh, there is long stretches in here of no glue dots. Okay. <laughs> I have a hard time concentrating tonight. Seriously, I did. I I was man. I was in production mode this afternoon. I impressed myself, um, and and the only reason I pulled it off, I think, <laughs> you're welcome, Donna. Um, the only reason I pulled it off, I think, was because um, I always have leftover bits and pieces all over my desk. Um, I have when I cut. I oh, I need a label, so then I go and cut seventy five labels. Um, so I had a bunch of like big squares cut out, um, and I made this. Oh God, I just love these flowers. Um, and I made a fairly simple card using the same layer. I had made one already that I really liked. And then because I thought, well, I got, I got bits and pieces. I'm using those. So in the end, I never did put one on the back, um, because I like it like this. <laughs> now, what color ribbon do I need? I love these flowers though. I, and the, the front of this makes me happy. I think this needs to be this color. Quite honestly, I don't even know what color this is. <laughs> the missing dots are on the other side of the strip. Oh, they're on half and half. Oh, it's frustrating. I quit the pile of ripped off paper here. Um, uh, I need to know what color this is. I don't actually think I have this color ribbon. I feel like this is the color ribbon I want, though. Let me see what we have here. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm in the process right now. Oh, look at that. Um, I don't think this is this exactly the same color. This is an old thing, but I think it is it is right enough color that it's going to work for what I want to do. Um, how is that for grammar? It is the right enough color. Um, okay. I'm going to show you what I do at the box. So this is what I do with my trusty tear and tape go. I find that people tend to take this off because there's a bow on the front. When people go to take the lid off, they're taking the lid off from the sides, right? Because you don't want to squish the bow. So I put the adhesive on the sides because I think that's where you're going to be pushing the most. So I don't wrap adhesive the whole way around, but I do put it on the side. And my logic is because that's where people put their fingers when they take it off. I also find it's easier to tie the bow with the lid on the box because then the box helps hold it up for you. So that's all I did for the ribbon, because like I said, there's ribbon on every one of them um, instead of DSP. I could do this because I have my silicone mat underneath, so I'm not sticking my lid to the desk. So now I've got my adhesive on either side. I take my halfway mark of my ribbon. And I go, and most of our ribbon, if you're using the twine, like Baker's twine, this is not going to work. But the rest of our ribbon, even this, which is, I think, our quarter inch ribbon, is, is just perfect for the tear and tape. <laughs> if you put it straight on top of it, you don't even see the tear and tape. There we go. So now it's there, so it's not constantly falling off. But when people go to take it on and off, they're grabbing where the adhesive is. And then because it's standing up so nicely for me, I can go here and do it this way. Here's a secret. I've said this before, I'll show you the bows anyways. When you're tying a bow, whichever one is on the underside, that's the one you make the loop. And then come from the back instead of from the front. And other than the fact that I have very crooked tails on this thing, you end up with a lovely bow. I'd, I let go of it mid-tie. Uh, mid I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, if you are frustrated with your bow at this point, you can also put a glue dot behind that first where the knot is. Um, 
because it'll hold it from sl sliding on you. Remember on Tuesday when we were doing this and I said, I like that crinkly ribbon because it doesn't slide. <clears throat> yeah, it's rare. Most ribbon does slide when you do it. There we go. And then, I'm gonna get my ribbon scissors out. Look at that one's already good. And even that up a bit because that was super crooked. There we go. Yeah, see, in person they look a little bit better together, but when I see them on camera, this looks like rust. It is Calypso Coral. This, no idea what it is. But look at that. Whoa. Okay, pretend that's that. I can't show you the back of the box because I didn't do it. So there's my hippie, hippie happy tower. And then if I had uh, if I had finished it, I even had the I even had the treats out to show you. Once it's all done, the, the lid balls fit the easiest, and you just tuck in the little the little tabs. But like I said, Ferrero Rocher also fits. So there you go, chocolate tower. Donna, I will expect you to be finishing yours now and um, posting pictures. <laughs> ah, there we go. So I will have, as I said, a link to the PDF for this in my blog on Saturday. Um, I will have, I gave away most of my, my samples today. So I will have pictures and some instructions for all my other little treat holders. Where'd my cup go? Here it is. See, I didn't put anything away since the other day. My cup. Oh, I totally love this apple. Okay. I had, um, I don't know what I had in here to begin with. I, I think I might've put a chocolate bar in here. I'm not sure I moved everything around. Then I ended up having this little candy and I had one of the little sesame snaps in there. Yeah, the sesame snap did not last. Love those things. But oh my goodness, I love these apples. Okay, so all of the pictures and instructions for these treat holders, plus this chocolate tower, um, will be in the in my blog on Saturday. And I will show you. Um, oh, thank you, Trina. Um, and hello. <laughs> so the other thing that I was working on on Tuesday and ran out of the time because I ran over on Tuesday because I had so many cute little treat things to show you. Oh, here's the other one I had, the Easter bunny. Um, that was an old one. That's why he's a retired bunny. But this is retired now. This is retired now. The rest is current. Um, so this is what I was working on. I told you I was going to make a little box for here. Uh, my mom loves these York peppermint patties. Um, this will this will not be hers. Her color of choice is um, is green, not black and white. But um, I wanted to see how this would work in black and white. So this is the one I had started to make. And I got to tell you, I will be making a whole bunch more of these, even though the dyes are retired, because look how cute this turned out. This is also, oops, that was, <laughs> sorry, I should have warned you there. Ooh, motion sickness. Um, this is also the new sparkly in color ribbon, which is delightful. It is so cute. Um, <clears throat> I do like it. So I wanted, I wanted green to be like the little leaves. And on this case, I actually put um, two of the flowers. And because this little um, dot, which I can't remember where I got, which set of embellishments I got that little yellow dot from, but it was kind of small and, and it, it didn't quite stick outside the, the, there's a die cut hole in the middle. I actually stuck this dot between the two layers of flowers. So I put it on the first one and put this other one over top of it. And I, I, I love the look. But these little boxes, there's four different little pictures. Um, Oh my goodness, I love them. And they fit, yes, two of the York peppermint patties. They fit, this is the cookies. So you could easily put um, get some coffee here. I don't have a tea bag on my desk. I usually have a tea bag on my desk. I put a little coffee. Because yes, what don't I have on my desk? That's what you're saying, I know. So there you go, coffee, cookie, and some Tic Tacs for when you're done, right? I mean, these are adorable. These went together so fast. Um, so yes, I'm going to, other than the die cutting, but I had already done that. Um, so I'm gonna show you the measurements for this. This will be new. We didn't get to see this on Tuesday, but I thought you might wanna see the finished product. Love these. I do like, I, I like wild flowers and, and like, you know, flower child hippie flowers, not the really fancy pretty ones. So these are right up my alley. Same as this and like these kind of, you know, there we go. I should stop rambling now. Hey people. If you have any questions about any of these, feel free to reach out and ask me. Um, I don't get very many comments on my blog. Um, 
I don't get any comments on the blog. Who am I kidding? Um, but I do get lots of like, you can direct message me or whatever too, if you want. Um, oh, you know what I forgot? I had punched some of these out. This is also, I see, I told you I'm like super tired today and just squirrel. Um, this is the parakeet party. Uh, oh, it just, it doesn't do it just, I can't make it focus. It does not do it justice. Um, this color green is awesome. Um, I was going to put some of these behind. I think I like it with just the flowers though, so we're good. Um, yeah, I don't get a lot of comments on the blog, um, but that's where I put all my instructions nonetheless because it's the easiest way to put them there. But yeah, feel free to comment or message or whatever if none of it, if it doesn't make any sense. Um, and I will happily um, add more instruction. But yeah, I was on a treat bender this week <laughs> and uh, it paid off because I, I sold 28 of them this afternoon. <laughs> 28 treat containers this afternoon. So there you go. Oh, let me see. Tomorrow, oh yes, tomorrow I'm doing a bonus live because, yep, if I was if I was ready, I'd have it where I could actually reach it. Because my theme for this week was note cards, right? Instead of picking a like a sketch or a color, I just went like, let me see your note cards. I love note cards. Um, and I needed to make some note card containers. But there's a really easy little um, take a piece of 12 by 12 DSP and boom, turn it into a, into a, um, a holder for the said note cards. So I will have instructions for that as well, but I think it's another one of those things. that's just easier if you see it done once before you read how to do it. So I'm going to have a bonus little short, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, uh, live tomorrow at noon when I show my note cards and show that how to make that folder. Uh, and then I think that's it. I think three lives in a week is uh, I'm, at, I'm at capacity. <laughs> so if I don't see you tomorrow during the live, um, happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who are mothering directly, indirectly, four-legged, two-legged, everyone out there. Um, enjoy your weekend. And uh, I have no idea what I'm doing on Tuesday, but I will be back on Tuesday at six um, with another project of, of who knows what. <laughs> so... Thanks, everyone. Have a great night, and we will talk to you later. Bye.